the idea of this podcast here is I'm going to be reading. Uh, <laughs> one thing I want to say is that I'm going to now add a, the, the video portion of the podcast. So it's going to be on YouTube. Uh, the video portion, I'm going to try and I, I don't know. I'm not going to put a lot of time in editing it. It's going to be like a raw, uncut video video per version. So you might see me get up and like get something to drink. I'm going to try and um <clears throat> and stop the video even during those those moments, but there are moments where I do just stop the recording and stop what I'm doing and kind of like um kind of like try and find something on my phone or I need to reference something, but anyways. <clears throat> This this podcast, I'm going to start, um, I'm not going to be reading this 100% word, word for word like an audio book, but the book is um, The Inner Work. Um, it's a really good like, like spiritual book. Uh, it's written by, I don't know, it just says the yoga couple, Matt and Ash. I mean, I don't know who wrote this. Um, Matthew... By Chelty and Ashley Cottrell. Um, it was written in 2019. Uh, updated versions 2022. Um, so it's it's recent. And what it is. Well. It, it's a book that. It's almost. It's almost like I should. I should just kind of. Kind of let the book explain itself. Um, welcome to the greatest adventure of your life. The journey. A back to your true self, the embodiment of pure love, true freedom, and lasting happiness. The path is simple, yet many find it to be the most challenging of all. This is, however, the this is, however, is entirely up to you and your own willingness to res to surrender resistance, as it is only through releasing the unhealed wounds within your consciousness. Uh, that you can remember uh, the true peace, unconditional love, and eternal joy uh, waiting to be revealed within you. And so it's it's a book. It's a book that is just kind of it's helping you self guide through finding the real you. That that's what it is. And so I'm 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 gonna read some of the book. I'm gonna explain how I see it. And we're going to go through it together. And that's that's kind of what it is. Um, so, like, more from the book. The, the shift out of the old and into the new paradigm of true freedom and lasting happiness can transform your current life uh, to heaven on earth. For this state of consciousness, there is no longer anything wrong or out of place. All is love, all is divine, all is perfect. Um... So throughout this whole book, and they talk about consciousness, and I talked about that in my previous uh, episodes of my podcast, exactly what consciousness is. Consciousness is your higher self, it's your soul, it's, it's your guiding light, almost think of it. it it's, it's what is guiding your physical reality, okay? It's, it's yourself telling you to choose your highest passion in life and go with it. Okay, so that's that's consciousness. So this this whole book is is um, um, kind of bringing you to that, and it goes it goes into Jesus, and um, <laughs> you get all these people it's dedicated to Jesus Christ, Krishna, uh, Buddha. Uganda, um, yeah, all these, all the, all the like religious um, leaders, Ramdas, uh, and then like like people like Carl Jung, uh, Michael Singer, Neil Diamond Walsh. It has it goes and has quotes from all these people, you know, and and I love it, and it takes it apart. So let's just let's just start kind of getting into. Um, um, my favorite passages. That's, that's like, that's kind of like what and where I want to go with it. 
<clears throat> so people in the YouTube are going to see me trying to find the passage here, but. All right, so this first passage that I want to discuss, they call it the chase, okay? The illusion is that the closer we move towards our goals and aspirations, regarding of what they, uh, regardless of what they are, the closer we feel, uh, the, the closer we feel we will be to the horizon of freedom and joy. The definition of a horizon, however, is the limit of perception. There is no actual line at the edge of the earth for which the sun is to set behind, just as there is no actual milestone, experience, place, or person which can give us happiness. Therefore, no matter the speed at which we pursue the horizon, our wanting of our wanting the horizon will continue to move further away. Because even when we do successfully acquire the object of desire, we ultimately still left to face the mundane frustrations of everyday life. Boy, that, <laughs> I just love, I just, just back to me here. I, I just love that, that, like, think about that. The horizon is always moving. The horizon is always changing. And even when you grab even when you grab a hold of what you consider to be the thing that will make you happy, you're going to be disappointed. <clears throat> and a big part of this is because you're not really making your true self happy. You're just having a an, an item or a job or something that you're defining as happiness. Oh, if I get this job, I'm going to be so happy. It's like, hold on, wait a second. The, will it or won't it, right? We have to look at things for what they are. Because oftentimes when you get a new job, you find yourself miserable and tired and sad. And it's the same old job again. It's like, oh boy, I need another new job. But this was the one you were searching for, you know? So back to the book. Circumstances. Inevitably, inevitably change people. Let us down, obligations arise, challenges surface, and life doesn't always go the way we planned. We innocently believe that we, when, when we arrive at happiness, we will finally be able to escape these daily struggles. So the struggle, back to me. So the struggle is, you, you, will, always have, you will always have these daily struggles that you have to deal with, right? But it's how you deal with it. It's how you perceive it. It's how you go on with it. So, you, so to make yourself happy, you, 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 you will be, you will be finding, and and that's one of the frustrations of being human, is that we achieve the goal and we're not happy with it. Back to the book, but without actual healing the root of our dissatisfaction with life, the and evolving our consciousness. Our problem will only continue to resurface again in new forms. No matter where we go or what we do, this fragile mentality mistakes the, the fragile mentality mistakes happiness, freedom, inner peace, and love as things as love as things that are given or taken away from us in an instant. When someone says something like we don't like <clears throat> when someone says something we don't like, inner peace is replaced with worthy or defensive. Wor uh, all right. When someone says something we don't like, inner peace is replaced with worry or defensiveness. If someone fails, sh falls short of our expectation, joy is replaced with disappointment. If obligations arise, we feel we are filled with resistance. If someone someone interrupts interrupts us, we are triggered with impatience. 
the result of this external, externally focused perceptive is that we have allowed circumstances and other people to, be, to bestow good or bad emotions upon us, wrongly accrediting them as the givers or thieves of our joy. However, both favor and unfavorable, unfavorable, both favorable and unfavorable emotions are neither the result of conditions of other people's actions. They are the direct result of which our of which theme of consciousness will be living in our chosen responsibility to our life circumstances. So let's just break that down, right? And that's where I want to go with this podcast. It's just kind of breaking that down. I just like like think about that. I'm going to reread I'm going to reread a couple of these lines. <clears throat> the fragile mentality mistakes the the fragile mentality mistakes happiness, freedom, inner peace and love as things that can be given or taken away from us in any instant. So it's basically saying that we ourselves see things like happiness and freedom being given and taken to us and taken away from us, right? And they say when someone says something we don't like, our inner peace is replaced with worry or defensiveness. So when someone says something we don't like, we are taking that and replacing inner peace, our own inner peace, with our worry or defensiveness. If someone falls short of our expectations, joy is replaced with just disappointment. So when we have an expectation of what should happen and it doesn't happen, we just think about it. All the times that we um, expect something, all the times that we expect this to happen, you're so... Before before the event happens, we're always so joyful. Oh yeah, let's go to Disney World. It's gonna be fun. Let's have a blast. Da 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 da. It's gonna be great. Oh, this this wedding, this party is gonna be fun. It's gonna be a blast. Da 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 da. And then something falls short of our expectations, so that joy is then replaced with disappointment, which goes to um, some of my previous podcasts saying expect nothing, right? As soon as you start expecting things, that's when you become frustrated. You become angry. You start feeling those physical emotions. And then those emotions start to get to you. They start to eat away at you. And that's that's what this is saying right here in the book. Um, If obligations arise, we are filled with resistance. If someone interrupts us, we are triggered with impatience. So immediately before this, and I kind of had this moment just literally now. I wanted I wanted to um I wanted to record this podcast about an hour ago. And then a friend of mine called, and I was immediately like, ah, I don't have the time to do the podcast. I sat down to do this podcast and now I'm frustrated. Now I'm mad. I'm angry. And it's like, hold on. And and I literally just read this. It all happened like, like it was strange. I read it and then um, uh, someone came to my door. I kid you not. No one. I have never had anyone come to my door. And, and so I got up and they talked to me. I answered the door and they, they were like, I want to do this Bible study reading. Would you be interested in hope, hosting Bible study? I politely just dismissed it. It's not something I would do. It's not something I'd be interested in doing. All right, then I'm trying to sit down again, record a podcast. It's what I want to do today on my day off, record a podcast. Okay, friend calls. Uh-huh, uh-huh, Yeah. And, but we had a good, meaning, meaningful conversation. Um, I'm glad to hear that she's doing well. It was actually kind of uplifting. But I was becoming impatient. And I realized that it was a moment, it was just kind of like the moment to report, record the podcast for coming. Because I was also sitting here um, 
you know, last night I went out, uh, and this morning I, I woke up, I was kind of stinky and sweaty and I needed to take a shower. And it's like, wait for the moment. Sometimes you just have to wait for the moment. Patience is hard to find. That really is true. It's because we're always trying to fulfill what we want to do throughout that day. And no matter what, there are going to be people and struggles and just go with the flow. You have to remember, go with the flow. That that mentality of go with the flow literally means, um, in my mind, it's like like I like I just said. I I read the I read this this because this was the the passage I wanted to start with in this podcast, um, and uh, someone someone came to my door. Then my friend called, and then my other friend called, and then a work texted me, and this and that. And it's like. Boy, my patience is... Why is my patience running thin? Because I feel like somebody is tanking. See? Um, the fragile mentality mistakes happiness, freedom, and inner peace and love as things that can be given or taken away from us in any instant. See? So it's going back to that line. These, my patience is being taken from me. No. It's not being... Taken from me. I'm just not going with the flow. Um, so we're going to go um, back to the book here. If uh, So if, if someone interrupts us, we are triggered with impatience. The result of this externally, externally focused perceptive is that we have allowed circumstances and other people to to bestow good or bad emotions upon us, wrongly accrediting them as the givers or thieves of our joy. That's what I'm trying to say. We are we are putting this emotion into that person. This person called me, took my patience away. This person came to my door, took my patience away. Um, right? However, both favorable and unfavorable emotions are neither the result of conditions of other people of, or actions. They are the direct result of which them, of which theme of consciousness we are living in our chosen response to our life and circumstances. I need to take a drink. My throat. <laughs> Sorry, I need to take a drink there. Um, so the the thing is that we are we are putting these these pre like like it's almost a notion that was instilled in us from a little kid. That these things are being taken or given away from us. But it's really it's it's not it's not how it is. <clears throat> Sorry, I, this is what I'm saying. People on the YouTube are gonna see this. I'm getting over a cold. I'm not gonna edit it because it's too it's too tiring to edit. 